Hi, this is John with the Everyday Bible Study. So glad to have you here with us today. I'm going to try switching cameras and see if my picture turns out a little bit better. That's, yeah, that, that looks a little bit better. Uh, we're looking at the Word of God, and we're in the book of uh, Mark, and that's the shortest of the Gospels. And we are in Mark 10, chapter 10, and uh, we are looking at uh, uh, the life of Jesus Christ, and uh, Jesus had just talked to the rich young ruler and uh, had uh, uh, the, the disciples were amazed at what Jesus had to say about the rich young ruler. Uh, they were thinking that salvation was uh, going to come to people like the Pharisees, people that were rich, people that had a great deal of possessions. And, uh, but Jesus was letting uh, them know that that was not what uh, brought someone into the kingdom of heaven. A person had to have a humble heart and accept him as their uh, Messiah, accept him as their Savior, and uh, they had to live a righteous life, but they had to come to him like a child. And, uh, and uh, they, uh, you know, Peter had just said to them that, uh, uh, you know, he, that they've left everything for Jesus. He said, see, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, truly, I say to you, there's no one who's left his house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold. Now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions in this age and, and to come eternal life. But, the, but many who will be last will be first and first will be last. So Jesus is telling us that we have to come to God in humility and come to him like a child. Now Jesus is going to be talking about his future here. In verse 32 it says, And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those that followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him, saying, See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and will deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. Then after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him. And uh, James and John were known as, uh, uh, had a nickname that was the Sons of Thunder. And uh, anyway, they were very bold. And uh, said to him, Teacher, uh, we want you to do the, do for us whatever we ask you. <laughs> when somebody asks you a question like that, you're automatically suspicious, right? And uh, the fact is that they were put up to this by their mother. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for, uh, for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in glory. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, uh, The cup that I drink you will drink, and the baptism which I'm baptized you will be baptized. And the fact is they would have a great deal of suffering themselves. Uh, James would die over in the book of Acts just in a very short period of time after Jesus would rise again. And then John would live a long life, but it would be a torturous life. And at one point, he was uh, boiled in oil, uh, them trying to kill him. And, uh, and they were not successful, And uh, but he was sent to the prison Isle of Patmos, uh, where he uh, wrote the book of Revelation. And uh, he was in exile on this prison desert island. Uh, verse 40 says, But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant but it is for those who have been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called to them, uh, called to him and said uh, to them, You know uh, that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord, uh, lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be among you. But whoever shall be great among you must be a servant, uh, your servant. And whoever be the first among you must be slave to all. And that, uh, you know, that would be a very uh, unpopular sentiment that Jesus is making here. But uh, here he's saying that uh, uh, for you to be a, 
a person who is going to be high in the kingdom of heaven is going to be someone who on here on earth is often look like as somebody who's uh, a subservient, someone who uh, uh, is often looked down upon by many people. And of course, Jesus was looked down upon by many, many people. But even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And the very best uh, ministers, the very best Christian uh, uh, people who uh, do Christian ministry, uh, the best uh, missionaries and uh, best evangelists, those are the ones that are truly servants at heart. Uh, they have a servant uh, mentality. So, looking here at verse 46, and so they came to Jericho, and he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, and Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of uh, Timaeus, was sitting uh, by the roadside. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called him, and the blind man saying to him, Take heart, get up. He is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want for me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. And that's the way he is. Um, the fact is, that's kind of an example to us, this blind Bartimaeus. He, here he had someone who was insistent on gaining the salvation of God and to have his sight restored. And we need to have our sight restored too. Uh, m many of us, um, here I'm older uh, than I used to be, and uh, my eyesight is not as good as it used to be. I used to have uh, 1510 eyesight in one of my eyes. And that means, you know, if you've got 2020 vision, that's considered, uh, you know, quote, perfect, but it's not perfect. But when you got, uh, uh, my eyesight was 1015, that means that one of the eyes, uh, could see as clear at 10 feet, excuse me, at 20 feet, as uh, a person with normal eyesight could see at 10 feet. And the other, other eye was good enough that I could see that clear at 15 feet. And, uh, but my eyesight's not nearly that good now. I have to wear glasses in order to be able to read. And uh, as we go, uh, our bodies uh, deteriorate and waste away. And uh, we uh, just don't maintain our functioning like we used to. Uh, but uh, certain people have blindness for various reasons. Uh, they can have infections, they can have genetic disorders, uh, they can have injuries to their eyes, and uh, and we see this man right here, he had something that had caused him to be uh, seriously blind. He was uh, probably uh, had no ability to see whatsoever. And uh, But Jesus called him because he called out to Jesus in faith. And uh, he uh, went uh, to Jesus and uh, he asked Jesus he was afraid to call out to Jesus for this thing that he so desperately needed and uh, we need to be that way with our salvation uh, but uh, we need to be saved uh, we have sin that will absolutely destroy us and uh, Bible tells us the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and sin will corrupt us from the inside out and it will destroy us and it will bring the wrath of God upon us and uh, will lead us to go to hell if we don't get the sin taken care of. There's only one way that we can get the sin taken care of and that is by the sacrifice that's made for us by Jesus Christ on the cross when he died for our sins and when he died for our sins he took the sins of all mankind upon himself on the cross and he became sin and he died for our sin and uh, the wrath of God fell upon Jesus in our place so that we don't have to face hell uh, we can have the perfect sacrifice for our sins and that's Jesus Christ being our Savior and uh, we can know his salvation so uh, let's pray dear Heavenly Father just want to thank you for your word today and thank you for the fact that uh, we need to cry out as sinners that we need a Savior to save us from our sins that would utterly destroy us. And uh, we're uh, uh, 
we have sin since uh, since birth, but uh, we go on to commit sins of our own volition, and uh, we we cheat, uh, we lie, we steal, we don't honor our father and mother, uh, we covet things, we commit adultery, uh, we uh, bear false witness, uh, we do all the various sins that you told us about, and uh, your Bible tells us that if we commit even one sin, then we're guilty of them all. And uh, the only one that can save from sin is Jesus Christ. And uh, just help us to believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross. And that he rose from the dead after dying for those sins. Taking your, his, your wrath upon him uh, that destroyed him. Destroyed his body. And he cried out to you, it is finished. And, uh, but he also cried out to those that were uh, bringing him to death said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then he rose up from the grave, rose up from death, through the power of the Holy Spirit working in, in him, uh, gained victory over sin and death. And that's our sin that died on the cross. And help us to believe this cosmic miracle that the Savior of the world, God himself, hanging there on the tree, that uh, he took the sins of all mankind uh, from beginning to end, and uh, you say, well, he did this a long time ago. How could this have been for me? But he is the uh, Alpha and o the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he, uh, he is not subject to time like we are. Uh, that's simply a, uh, uh, a stipulation that has been created for mankind and for nature. But uh, God is eternal. And those actions that he did upon the cross... Uh, we're saving actions that if we believe that Jesus uh, died for our sins and, and we repent of our sins and turn away from those sins and want to live for Christ and want to live a life of holiness uh, through God's power to clean us up uh, that uh, we can be saved and the Bible tells that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and help us to believe that Help us to believe on Jesus Christ as our Savior today. And uh, Lord, we pray that many people will believe and gain salvation in Jesus Christ. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today for the Everyday Bible Study. And uh, just stick with us in these Everyday Bible Studies as we go through the book of Mark. And uh, share this video with uh, somebody that you know. And you can look here on the screen. And on one side, there'll be another video, which will be one of the previous videos. And then on the uh, this side of the screen, you'll see a picture of me playing a guitar. And you can click on that, and you can subscribe to our page on YouTube. And you can get notifications whenever new videos are uploaded. Uh, so until next time, this is John with Everyday Bible Study, praying that you have a great day.